Here we have our explosion proof limit switch box. We've got one sitting on the top of the pneumatic actuator here. So we've already mounted this. I'll, I'll, actually, I'll start off by opening up and show you what you get in a box and where you need to go to from there. So out of the box, you're going to look like this. You have your explosion proof limit switch box and a bracket. Now, the good thing about this bracket compared to most is this is a multi-size bracket. So on the top here of the actuator where we've got this mounted, so this is a, it looks like an 88, what we would call a spring return 88 mil actuator, maybe 100, not quite sure, but the, the mill mounting on this is one size. If you went up to say a 150 mil actuator, you're gonna find that it's another size. So this is the same bracket here, and you see how the legs have come out and the spacing has gone up higher. So that would fit a larger standard as well. So it means this bracket that comes with it can fit, uh, it's actually two Nomura standards, what we would call a small and a large. There are other ones in the series, but this would cover most of them. So it's handy if you're gonna mount this and you're not quite sure what the Nomura mounting is on the actuator, this bracket will most likely cover it. So once you've got that, you'll attach the bracket to the limit switch box and then the bracket to the actuator that you've got here. You can do it either way, but doing it that way, obviously it lets you get to the fixings a little bit easier underneath here. And then onto your actuator here, you can see where those bolts are in. The trick here on the top, usually on the top of your actuator, you'll have a visual indicator like this. So you'll take that off. What that then exposes under here is this raised female drive. So on the bottom of your limit switch box, you're gonna have a shaft with two flats, what we would typically call a double D, this is actually a step double D. But that drive there will mate into the raised female drive on your actuator. Now what in mating that, what it does is this, this spline, or this, actually the, the center, you probably call it a shaft, think of it as a continuous shaft that runs from your limit switch box all the way through, this is a rack and pinion pneumatic actuator, all the way through there down to the shaft which connects to the bore. So you've got a mechanical linkage there. So whenever the actuator turns the valve, at the same rate, the limit switch box will also turn. Now this limit switch box here, we've got two M20 cable gland entries here. Just And while we're talking about cable glands, the IP rating of this, which is IP67, so the IP rating of this, which is IP66, is only IP66 providing you use the right cable gland. So if you don't do that, there's no use having a, whatever IP rating you want on here because you get ingress of water or dust or something from the atmosphere uh, through this cable gland. So it's important you use the right cable glands here. Now, if we lift this up, I've just got these bolts loose already to save a bit of time. You'll see underneath the top here is a wiring diagram. This just shows your terminals. It's got two single pole double throw switches. So you can wire it normally open or normally closed. Got the wiring diagram there. Might be a bit hard to see uh, through the camera, but it's easy to see with the eye. And you've got your terminals across here. Now your shaft, which runs down and connects with the actuator, has got two cams on it. You see the yellow at the bottom and the red at the top. Now what happens as the shaft turns, these cams trigger these two switches here. So usually you would set it for open and close with what we would call end of position feedback. It's, it won't give you a four to 20 milliamp, uh, like a modulating, you couldn't modulate with this because it's only giving you two positions at a point in time. You can adjust these positions here. You can push down and adjust the cam. You note at the moment this top switch is depressed and the bottom one isn't. So we'll actuate this in a minute and you can see what these do. One other thing to be careful of is the O-ring here. Uh, this may stick to the top when you open it up, but it's got a recess it needs to sit in here as well. The actual body itself is aluminium. It's powder coated. Coat it with the top off so you can see uh, the spline on the top, or the shaft on the top move and the cams corresponding with it. So you can see how this cam came away from the switch and the bottom one, this bottom switch is actually on now with the yellow one. If I let that go, it's a spring return unit. You can see how that reversed. 
So if we put this housing on, you can also see how it mates with the visual indicator on the top. You would do these up in the real world, but we'll just leave them like that in the meantime so we can quickly see it. And I'm going to actuate it to see the visual indicator move from open, so the valve is fully open now, at least if it's closed. Now usually, if this is just a, a demo one that we've got here, if this was in a hazardous area, you, you would probably use a hazardous area 5.2 valve as well, such as this one. Um, this one here is not a hazardous area anymore, so. So these are ICEX rated? ICEX, correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, EXD. Now you could, you know, there's other alternatives as well. You could have a purely pneumatic feed to it or any any number of ways.